Um, so, I'm, my name is John. Uh, I'm here to try to stimulate a conversation with you, and I really do just want to have a bit of a back and forth. So, as Eli suggested, I'm going to throw out some ideas um, after I tell you a little bit about who I am and what I'm doing, and then um, I hope that we can have a chat. And if not, then I'm just going to keep talking until my time's up. Okay, so uh, what I do for a living is I facilitate benevolence. That's what I say, but anyone who works with me says you're not allowed to use the word benevolence, okay? Benevolence means to do and produce good. I use that word because producing good inside of a charity is not the only way to produce good. There's nonprofits, there's social ventures, there's for-profit companies, and then there's just the human spirit. Okay, so all of that to me is benevolence. Um, I've been working in this sector with my dad who's a charity lawyer and one of the foremost charity lawyers in the country and we do a lot of work internationally. So where I cut my teeth in the charitable sector was on the hardcore facilitation side, registering charities, raising lots of money. We move well over 100 million a year, um, um, dealing with audits, uh, a lot of legal foreign advice like we're right now the, still the foreign advisors to China who's drafting its first law of charity, which is an interesting problem to solve. So I live more on that facilitation side, how do you make it happen, as opposed to literally how do you cure cancer. Okay, I, I can't do that, I'm not a scientist. Um, but I can help facilitate and structure and guide how you might finance or structure that, uh, hopefully, eventuality to, to occur. <clears throat> so, where I started was like, in the real high end, right? You got lots of money, you got lots of big aspiration or vision for charity, come to us, we are called Benefit Group, and talk to us and we'll help you structure. As I, as I started sort of focusing in on this thing called the internet, I got really interested in the democratization of, of charity and what it might look like as regular folk like me got access to um, the type of structures you'd put in place for, you know, a Jim Pattison or something like that. Okay, so without going into too much detail, that's the idea behind CHIMP. So let me just give you a real quick overview to CHIMP and then I'm gonna get to my three-point slide uh, presentation. Okay, so CHIMP, we're, just, we're, we're an online tool. Uh, it empowers people to give to or fundraise for any charity in, in, in Canada. So that suggests to you that we're a cause-neutral platform. We don't try to tell you what to do with your money. We try to help you do with your money what you want to do. We take donations, automated tax receiving, we run campaigns, social fundraising, automated donation matching, and there are charitable accounts. So in the future, you know, you know, my great great grandparents probably were like, bank account, are you crazy? Right? And now I have a bank account, of course I have a bank account. Um, my view is that everyone will have a charitable bank account in the not too distant future. We don't sell chip as a software platform. You can certainly use it, so there's no software installation. We try to make it as cheap as possible. <coughs> We're just coming out of beta, so we've been really quiet about ourselves on purpose, but to date we've uh, raised 23 million and dispersed to well over 3,000 charities. These are some of the people we're working with right now, Bell, Hootsuite, Shout out to Hootsuite, they're a pretty sweet local company. Uh, Whitecaps, um, others. Okay, so amplify your giving. So let's get into what I'm here to talk about. It kind of struck me that um, 2020 actually isn't that far away. It's like 2020, wow, yeah, so far away. It's like a couple years old. So let's just look at a couple high level points, okay? Regardless of, ad of asset class, giving will be facilitated online. Okay, I'm gonna come back through these things. Corporate marketing budget, will look much more charitable. There will be more choice for donors. I'm gonna come back to these things. Here's the three thoughts that I thought I'd throw down for you guys. There will be a major social network for charity and it will be controlled by people, not charities. These are the types of things I wanna to talk to you guys about. Okay. Your, I'm assuming people here are mostly coming from charities or nonprofits. Your most influential fundraisers won't work for you. Donors won't necessarily be giving away their own money. What? Okay, 
So here's the end of the presentation. <laughs> okay. Uh, giving power will become more evenly distributed between old young and rich poor. The charities that will thrive will effectively communicate to and engage with people and be held socially accountable for the effectiveness of their programs. Okay. So, which computer do I use? Let me just paint a little bit of context here. And I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I'd rather talk with you guys about it. Um, but trust me, I could speak all day about all these points. Let me just, let me just t tell you a little bit more about what I'm, what I, where I'm going here. Okay, regardless of asset class, people have told me for a long time that the internet is about small donations, okay? That's BS. Giving will be facilitated online. The key word there is facilitated. Chimp, for example, 23 million. We've done over a million dollars in credit card donations, over a million dollars in check, over a million dollars in life insurance, over a million dollars of publicly traded securities, and over a million dollars of private company share donations. We're just an online platform, aren't we? Okay, we take all those types of gifts. And I'm in discussion right now to do a first land deal. Not because I've never done land before, but I like to test the waters a little bit before you sort of, you know, go on the road, as they say. So regardless of asset class, regardless of what type of asset you're giving away, okay, and cash is not the most, ca most effective form of giving in Canada. For lay people, publicly traded securities are. Regardless of what you're giving away, it'll be facilitated online. Corporate marketing budgets will look much more charitable. This is an aspirational thought for me anyways. I come from an investment banking background, and one of the things I learned is that return on investment is important. The other thing you learn that's actually something close to law in the United States is that if you do something other than return value to your shareholders, you're, you can actually get in trouble. So like, why do corporations give money away? Like, so let, take the hardened spirit out of charity for a second, and like, what, literally why are they giving money away? From a purely sort of finance-driven finance approach, lens, okay, there's no reason for them to give money away unless they're doing something to sort of retain, okay, <coughs> on the employee HR side, okay, something cultural, why that adds value. If anyone here hires people, it's incredibly difficult to do. It's incredibly hard to, to get good people and retain them. Or they'll give money away because it does something for who they are and their brand, okay? It lifts their brand value. Okay, in, in, in corporate theory, I'm not trying to you know, say, hey, corporations don't give money away. I'm trying to say in corporate theory, corporations have no business giving money away unless it does something for them in return. So, in the future, their marketing budgets will hopefully look a lot more charitable, like, oh, hey, Starbucks, thanks for the latte. Neat, like, are you gonna give money to a charity that I've never heard of and I'm not engaged with? Or are you gonna give money to me, basically at the till, 10 cents, 25 cents, depends how expensive the latte was. And you know, I'm off to the next thing and I'm going to have charitable impact with your money rather than you having it for me. And by the way, I'm not paying attention to where you're having charitable impact, so it's not doing anything for your brand. More choice for donors. Okay. There was a longer slide, there was a longer sentence up here. And so I'm just gonna tell you what I'm going with that. More choice for donors to me means that whether or not there's going to be more charities in the future, a conversation I'm happy to have, donors will be able to easily access and give money to nonprofits. Okay, and for those of you who have less structural background in charity, charities and nonprofits are not the same thing. Right? Charities issue tax receipts, nonprofits do not. So you can't give charitable dollars to nonprofits unless you know how to do that. The real problem though for consumers is they don't know where nonprofits are. There's no database of nonprofits. There is for registered charities. Once you start being able to access you know, nonprofits to give to them, it will become a choice for donors whether or not, for example, they value the tax receipt. The other thing that's gonna happen is that social ventures, whatever those things are, okay, are gonna be presenting themselves to you to say, hey, why don't you invest in us rather than give money to them? You want to invest in this uh, water saving uh, 
technology, or do you want to give money to that sort of water-saving charity? That will become a choice. And people, because the internet, will be able to find those choices and make, and then them, them being the donor, make the choice between whether they're investing in benevolence or they're giving their money away to benevolence. Okay, so that's the context behind my sort of contextual slide, okay, which leads me, I guess, to this point. I think this point speaks for itself. Maybe the one thing I'd point out, although it seems obvious to me, is that the charitable sector or the nonprofit sector is totally disintermediated, right? It's like, I mean, Canada is a small country, but there's still 85 to 90,000 registered charities in the country, okay? 90,000 qualified donees, anyways. So, um, you know, there's well over a million nonprofits here. I mean, you go down to the US, those numbers, you know, jump by a lot, right? There's over a million nonprofits. In the UK alone, there's over a million nonprofits. So, people, I think, will assemble like they have on other social networks and it will both become focused on charities, now, uh, on, on charity. But people will do that and charities will be, you know, clamoring after them trying to get their attention. Charities resist this kind of stuff all the time, by the way, because they're so focused on themselves and not on what's going on in the sector. Your most influential fundraisers won't work for you. Okay, so I could go a lot of different ways with this. Who here knows what angel list is? Anyone want to explain it? Go for it. So, so one thing you can do as a regular consumer who can't easily get access to investing into startups, by the way, because there's all these rules, you've got to be kind of rich to do that, um, is you can sort of give your money to, you know, Voller X and let him or her decide what um, startups you're going to invest in, okay? So, you know, how big of a stretch is it to say, wow, um, Eli knows a lot about uh, I don't know. Not hard. Not hard. Beer. Beer. <laughs> Beer. <laughs> okay. Bad example. Uh, I love beer, but bad example. I'm not sure it's charitable. It was way back, right? That beer comes out of the church. Um, okay. Uh, so where I'm going here is that uh, influencers, okay, this word influencers that's thrown around a lot on the web, are going to dominate. And people will people will give their money to someone who they think can give it away better than them and those people will give the money away. That's an example of what I'm talking about and that's kind of what happens in angel list. Let's take a different example that I think also will come true and I'm not sure if it's good or bad and all this stuff I'm not sure if it's good or bad. Uh, Angelina Jolie, right, has a cause maybe related to breast cancer now among all the other causes that she's really is or supposedly is affiliated to. So she's cool, she's my hero, she's whatever. Like, she's into this, I'm gonna give my money to her and let her distribute it rather than give the money to the charity that she's talking about. That's gonna happen. So right now, those people, fundraisers, advocate for charities and we sort of maybe give money to the charities. What I'm suggesting is gonna happen, and is already happening, by the way, in this sort of thing called crowdfunding, which is, by the way, fundraising, um, is that you're sort of allocating your money to someone to do with your money what they are either representing or going to represent in the future. This is sort of a sub-point to that, and by the way, this is sort of cascading. Donors won't necessarily be giving away their own money, okay? Uh, I've got uh, kids, right, three and one. I pay both of them a charitable allowance. Every month I put 20 bucks, I think, 50 maybe, into their account. Now they can't read, although they are more fluent on an iPad than I am. Um, but where that's going is by the time they're seven or eight, they're, Daddy, Daddy, do you want to give money to the um, Terry Fox run? You know, we're running it tomorrow. You know, yes or no? They, well, son, you know, you decide. Right? I mean, growing up with an allowance with me, it was like, hey, you know, do you want candy or do you want a skateboard? And from my, from my parents were like, you can have candy or a skateboard, but not both unless 
right? You save and all the rest of it. So we're, 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 people will be giving their money away to other people to give their money away for them. I'm giving my money to my kids, you know, partly to train them into charity, but partly because I'm saying, hey, yeah, you give it away. I match donations uh, through Chimp, through, through everybody who works with me. Okay, if you work for me, you get your donations matched up to $1,500 a year. That's me giving my money away to my employees to give away for me. Okay, when it's your birthday, I chimp you. That's me giving my money to you to give away for me. Yeah, sweet. I just need your email address. My Starbucks example from earlier, you walk in, like, so Starbucks, is, are they gonna like, continue to give money away to the th charities that they suppose, I, I'm just picking on Starbucks, could be anybody. So, you know, or are they gonna chimp, well, in my view, are they gonna chimp you, or are they gonna sort of send you charitable money at the till for you to give away for them? Like from a brand representation, what, what makes you feel better about Starbucks? So donors won't necessarily be giving away their own money. That's going to open up a whole new class, like sort of asset class, if you will, of donor. Right? And I think some of the things that result, and I could have, you know, written a long list here, is that there's going to be a more even distribution between, for example, young and old, because my grandma if she were still alive, would be saying, hey, grandson John, you take some of my money and give it away for me. I mean, we have people in Chimp buying life insurance on, grandparents buying life insurance on their children or their grandchildren with the whole idea that as the cash balance in there grows and or as you know, someone passes on, that that money will go into account for someone else to give away. That sort of like passing on, that's so okay, well, we're passing on charitable values, but you're also passing along financial uh, or wealth or whatever, okay. And the rich of Starbucks will distribute their money out for more people to participate in. So you could say this is true today. Effectively communicate to and engage with people. Okay, is that true? You know, we think it's true. We'd like to believe it's true. I don't really think it's true at the macro level because 60% of the dollars in Canada that are given away go to 1% of charities. Okay? So, and a lot of charities do some pretty decent, if, you know, communication engagement. So at the macro level, uh, I'm not sure that um, that's true in the future, but as social networks, as social networks come together, I think that's gonna become more true. The, the crowd, if you will, is gonna hold a lot more sway. And I think charities are gonna actually have to be held accountable, like truly accountable, not theoretically accountable, where we are today, for the effectiveness of their programs. The charities who fundraise the most in Canada, and I'm not trying to say they're bad charities, I'm trying to say they're not held accountable for the effectiveness of their programs. There's a sort of long adage in the sector um, that, uh, you know, says, yeah, well, it's not really a quote per se, but the notion is, like, if you're a big donor, you can get all the accountability you need from a charity, right, because they'll pay attention to you. That will probably be the same in the future, but as the masses of people, you know, come together and can sway movements and sway opinion because they're heavy together, um, they will start to call BS on charities that say, hey, cool, check out all rad my video. Has that really engaged you? But when you dig under the surface, the programs aren't there to, um, uh, to sort of um, uh, be right about um, what I'm trying to say here. The programs aren't really there to back up what's being said in the video. Okay, and then I think that as the crowd is there and if people are focused and if the social network for charity exists, they will say, okay, that's not cool and we're moving away and that charity will have difficulty. So, I think that's coming to the end of my 10 minutes. <coughs> I could very easily keep talking about any of these points, but I'd rather sort of open it up to you guys for discussion on any piece in here, or unrelated to this, I'm happy to talk about whatever, um, and uh, see how you guys are feeling.
<laughs> and don't make me cry. Okay, don't make John cry. If you have any questions for John, right off the bat, I've got a million. I'm getting started. Who wants to jump in first? Okay, it's in me. Okay. John, uh, so think about your questions, you guys, and I will. Well, is that working? Okay. Um, John, when you were saying uh, about corporate marketing budgets becoming maybe more charitable, more philanthropic minded, I'm wondering if you might talk a little bit, um, and I know there's a couple corporations represented in here, but do you see, you know, corporations at one point as a fundraiser, I noticed they kind of started to split everything out. They started to, like now corporations have their own foundations, their own donor advised funds, maybe if they're a financial institution. Also, they're still giving corporate gifts and some of them are still also, um, you know, have all these different giving funds. Do you see it all merging back into one again as they try and do like more seamless branding with like not just with the marketing budget, but do you see it all collapsing into one giving stream again or not? That's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't know what's actually going to happen, unfortunately. But what I, what, I, what, I would, what I would suggest people think about is like be really honest about what corporations in theory exist to do, okay? which is to return value to shareholders. That's what they're for. So how does your charitable piece fit into that? Okay, in the past, you know, hey, submit your, your, your grant application here and maybe we'll give money to you. And so then corporations are sort of saying, okay, well, I guess we're going to align around a cause. Okay, but think about a cause. Okay, like let's let's take my work with Bell right now. Okay, so Bell, what are we doing with Bell? Claire Hughes is riding her bike around Canada, uh, and Bell's cause is mental health. So why are they doing chip? I think there's two reasons. One is because our technology is okay, and the second reason is because um, how many mental health charities are there in the country? Okay. Well, if you ask Chimp literally, which is based on T3010 data, it'll tell you, I don't know, I think something like five or six hundred. Okay, but realistically, the number of charities out there are doing programs that relate to mental health is probably closer to the two to three thousand level. So, what's Bell going to do? Choose a charity out of Toronto, and then when Claire's ride through Vancouver, say, "Sorry, you got to give to the Toronto charity." Or are they going to let people, you know, engage in that ride if they want to, and do something for the charity of their choice? Or said differently, that's for the consumer market go to the charities of mental health and say, hey, by the way, we're spending all this money sending Claire around the, 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 the country, pretty big country, um, talking about mental health, really focused on reducing stigma. If you want to plug in, here's a tool. And by the way, maybe there's some matching dollars on the table. Want them? Come get them. So I'm not sure I'm entirely like, because you're asking a really big question. What I, so let me come back to where I started. Like, what value does charity add to the corporation? And how, when their, like, non-caring, you know, spirit is in the room, are they going to be able to sort of justify charity for reasons that go beyond the feel-good factor? I think that char businesses care about people. And people care about charities. I don't think, okay, if I, so I'm going to be black and white with you now, and I, I live in a gray world just like you do. If I had to take a, a stance, I would say business cares about people, people care about charities. Not businesses care about charities. Okay, I'm not saying businesses don't care about charities. Businesses care about people, their consumers and their employees, and those people care about charities. So in that world, what do you do? Well, as, as me, literally me as a business, I choose to give my people and or my customers access to my philanthropic budget to give away. Why? Because I would rather the people be excited about me than the charities. A thousand questions suddenly. Okay, uh, but I had you first and then you and then all of you. So go ahead. Uh, there seems to be uh, the, the, the super high-end donors, yeah. uh, large amounts, uh, and whatnot. And then you see a lot of charities not profit as well for the charity that is Yeah. Did it, 
hear that question okay back there? We're, kind of, we're wondering like where are those mid-level donors? Everyone knows about the little grassroots guys. Big, yeah, big donors, small donors, kind of who do you focus on? And, and are you asking how do you get access to the ballers or how do you get access to the bit of middle? So, so one sort of cost benefit analysis that gets applied to that when you're choosing between big donors and small donors or medium donors is like, who can I, you know, it's like, oh, I can, if that person only gave me a million dollars, okay, but like, are you going to get it and what's the risk if you just focus on that? Well, same risk exists with the crowd. If you go for the crowd, are they going to, are a billion people going to give you a dollar and now are you going to focus on them? No, the middle ground is, I don't know. So let me just give you a couple stats. Average Canadian gives 250 to $300 away a year. Average Canadian, okay? The sector is about 12 to 15 billion. Um, one of the stats I love in the United States, who's better, better at stats than Canada? Uh, so $350 billion sector annually. Just charity, not nonprofit, just charity. 100 billion is given away every year by the masses of people who earn less than $100,000 a year. 100 bill, is giving away every year by the masses of people who earn less than $100,000 a year. Okay, So every year, that mass is producing two uh, Warren Buffett and a, a Bill Gates who otherwise come along once in a generation. right? Not just ballers of that magnitude, but ballers who are willing to give their money away. Ballers, I mean rich people. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll tell you how I answer that question through CHIMP. <clears throat> We're running matching campaigns where we go to a large donor and we say, like for example, one's uh, going out right now related to Clara's Big Ride and Bell. So a uh, reasonably large donor is, uh, I'll tell you exactly what's happening. A, uh, a generous medium-sized donor, 25,000, is that in the middle? I don't know. $25,000 donor put up money for mental health associations just in British Columbia. So what he's going to do is he's going to put that into a giving group, which is a crowdfunding, Chimp's crowdfunding application, and he's going to go to his private network and say, I'm matching dollar for dollar what you put in this group. The goal is to get to $50,000, and then we're going to take that 50, and we're going to open it up to every BC mental health organization in the country. So what's going on there? Like how I'm trying to answer your question and what literally I'm doing. And I'm going to bring you back to when I said big donations are going to happen online and you know that, that oh, the internet's for small donation is BS part. Is we're taking large donations and we're leveraging them across the small guy who gets incentivized when their 20 bucks turns to 40. And the big guy is incentivized when he or she knows, um, what am I doing with this wall here? <laughs> when the big guy you know, knows that um, uh, his donation is is being doubled or her donation is being doubled. And beyond that, what else is happening is that, you know, the charities are coming to the table and doing a little fundraising piece, right, which is a component of capacity building. So there's more stuff going on. Charities are finding new donors. Donor acquisition is incredibly expensive. And the other thing the donor likes, if he or she doesn't want to be anonymous, particularly if it's a corporation, is that their brand can be matched with, partnered with, the small donor who's 20 bucks now goes to 40 thanks to Richardson GMP or RBC or Van City or whatever, right? Because one of the things corporations struggle with, and they don't all admit it, is that the consumers have no idea what they do with their money. Okay, so if you don't know what the corporations do with the idea, and then you go back to that ROI piece, it's like, well, so dude, seriously, keep your money and give it to your shareholders. And let's then see whether or not they're stewards. Does that help? I don't know. So that's my approach to your question. I don't know necessarily how to, you know, otherwise answer what's a, a big and good question. Sure. Yeah. Well, me, I am for sure. Absolutely, no question. Chip, absolutely. Why? 
So what, what we haven't done with Chimp, for those of you who have seen it or used it before, is we haven't added any of the social networking capacity in there. Why? It's because I, anyways, refuse to build a social network for charity that's not built on real action. Okay? Uh, someone asked me a question about slacktivism, and you might, might actually make me cry. Um, only because it's a, hard, it's a hard question to know. It's like, you know, I don't want to tell you not to share and tweet, but on the other hand, I don't want you to actually think that that's necessarily going to make clean water. I don't know. So I would say I'm working on it. The way I'm working on it is slowly and surely through, you know, real people and users. And as they come and use Chimp, uh, because we're web-based, we know in theory, well, we know in actuality where they give their money. And so instead of just exposing that, what we'll do is we'll build a sort of, you know, whatever you call it, like landing page for the person or the corporation or the group or your club or your Bible study that you can, you know, represent your charitable impact to the public. And by the way, Chimp is a portmanteau for charitable impact. Boom, that's how we got the Chimp. Uh, the real story is actually a little bit more nefarious than that. Um, but that's what it stands for. Uh, so I'm building a social network for charity. Others have tried. A group in the US, I uh, can't remember their name, someone who's related to Facebook causes tried and failed. And my general high level view on why it failed is because it, it was more about like, let's talk about charity as opposed to let's do charity and then expose it. So that's an interesting point too, by the way, that last one. So if I don't touch on all those points, just hammer them at me again. And it comes back to somewhat your first question. So, uh, so Whole Foods, okay, uh, they, pretty green company, right? Pretty, I don't know, so sort of charity kind of goes with that, maybe, okay. Um, let, let, let's, let's pretend they, let's say they are. They've had that charity piece for a long time. Don't get out of a bag, money goes to charity. Great, I love it. The problem I have with what Whole Foods does, and this is me going where I'm going, is, sorry, like, like so I'm a hardcore charity nerd, right? Like, all I do is charity. And uh, there's a Whole Foods around the short corner from my office, and I go there, I don't know, every uh, month, maybe? And I've never, ever once been in there when I've actually heard of one of the three charities. Now, I'm not saying those aren't charities. In fact, I can pull out my mobile phone, go to Chimp, and find out if they are. But I, this like crazy charity nerd who does nothing but charity and is a neutral guy when it comes to charity, I've never heard of any of them. So my problem with what they're doing is they're saying, yeah, you wanna, you wanna, you don't wanna beg, you wanna give to charity, or you wanna donate 10 cents to charity, or round up, or whatever they're saying. You know, well, yes I do, but not to, not to those three charities who I've never heard of. And what I wanna do even less, which like Indigo and stuff do, is like, wanna give to us? What are you, crazy dude? I just bought a book from you and I think it's way, way overpriced, you know? So what I want to do is I want to give to me to give away. I don't want to help Safeway necessarily give more money away, which by the way, theoretically suggests that they have to take less of their own money and give it away, right? I mean, that's a smart business play. Yeah, if the consumers give money away for us, we don't have to give our money away ourselves. Now, in that regard, you know, and back to my investment banking hat, I would say, okay. And if you're being realistic, which I try to be, where I'm going here is saying, okay, Bell, you know, ride across Canada, great, about stigma, great. Where's the call to action for charity? Mm -hmm. It's not really there. But if corporations can act as distribution to benevolence, charity, I'm all game. I'm fine with that, let's at least start there. What I think is definitely gonna happen is that corporations are gonna look at how they can best return on investment when giving money away. And if they determine that they do that best by letting their users give it away for them, 
then they're going to do that. ROI in the charitable sector today uh, from the, for the businesses is effectively non-existent, if you're being honest about it. And I'm not saying that charities aren't doing good work. I'm saying the Marcom side is not there. No one knows what's going on, so why do they do it? Last piece, do you trust them? Okay, if I was here selling Chimp, and I'm always selling Chimp, is like if you run it through a third-party platform like Chimp, like unless we're lying, which we won't do because that's the only business that we're in, then, then you see the money go away. If I put the 10 cents in the bucket and there's no accountability and I've never heard of those three charities, so I'm not gonna follow them, so I'm not gonna determine whether or not that money went to anything, then how do I actually know it actually got given away? You don't. whether I'm seeing any changes in trends as to how donors are giving relative to charities versus nonprofits, for example. Um, so, and then you said, then he said, um, and some charities are starting to create a nonprofit wing. So let me start there structurally, because this is where I live and breathe tru truly in the sector. This is where I come from. If you came to me and you said, hey man, I got a vision to uh, save the whales, whatever you're saving, okay. And you wanted to do it properly, I wouldn't give you a charity or a nonprofit or a social venture or a for-profit or a charitable organization, I don't know, foundation. I would give you all of them. I would say, here's your nonprofit, and it's for stuff that's not charitable at law, and for taking money in on things that the donor does not require a tax receipt on. One rule of thumb at Benefic, um, my advisory company, is never put money into a charity if you don't need to issue a tax receipt in order to close the deal. Why? Because like, dude, charities have tons of rules. And it's not about, oh, well, you know, so be a steward, don't break the rules, but you know, don't unnecessarily restrain yourself, okay? Financial flexibility is a massive issue. It's a real important thing. So uh, charitable organizations, they do a certain thing. They carry out the activities of charity, you know, so I give you that. I give you a foundation where you do all your fundraising, not endowment stuff. I mean, that's, 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 that's true, but it's also stupid. I mean, foundations should be for fundraising because there's no risk to a brand. If you screw up a foundation, you're either doing something really interesting or you're making a dumb mistake. Okay? The risks in the charitable organization are much higher. So you always fundraise into a foundation and then you pass the money down to your charitable organization to carry out the activities. And then you might have a for-profit or a social venture to do, I don't know, whatever you might be returning some investment on or something. Okay. So first of all, you come to a guy like me, that's how you structure every single charity play. You do it properly. Whether, to, to your question about whether I'm seeing any changes in giving, I think the material issue there that I don't really know, but I can make some guesses on, is how material is the tax receipt? To a donor, there's no other way to get tax effectiveness than by having a tax receipt. To a corporation, that's not the case. Because if you can write off your donation in a way that other than in the form of a tax credit, which is what a tax receipt gives you, like, hey, we got our name on the event banner. That's called marketing, right? So I'm not necessarily seeing the trend shift, but I think that as uh, if people had their head in the game, like donors actually understood, which is not a reality, they would give their money away to, uh, you know, the entities that they actually thought were great. I'll give you an example, okay? My mom, uh, who's married to my dad, who's a, a much crazier charity nerd than I am, she basically doesn't give money to registered charities anymore. She gives cash to nonprofits. 
Okay, now she's an advocate herself. She comes from a, uh, she's a nurse, she's a social worker, she's done a lot of work on the downtown east side and other <coughs> parts of Vancouver. So she herself is an advocate. We always joke about how we, we fabricate charity, but she actually does it, so she wins. Um, and uh, she, she gives her money cash. Why? It's the only way to be truly anonymous. As soon as you give money to a charity, then they issue a tax sheet, they know who you are by definition of law. And because she's been down in some areas and experienced so much work that she's kind of going, these are the effective organizations, in her own opinion. Okay, I'm not saying there's no good charities on the downtown side or anywhere else in the world. That's not what I'm saying. But in the context where she believes in her heart and mind that those organizations are more effective, she's willing to forgo the tax receipt, call it 40 cents on the dollar, to give less or have it be more painful to her bank account to achieve more charitable impact or what she believes to be more charitable impact. So I'm not sure I'm seeing the trend, but what I do think is that um, the options will become more clear through a social network for benevolence. Like if you, if you guys, for example, don't think I can figure out how to get nonprofits into charity uh, and to chimp, you're wrong. If you think I don't know how to get social ventures in there where you can take money in your account and like crowdfund with your buddies to raise a hundred grand to invest into, you know, light bulb company X that's gonna, you know, help our energy crisis, whatever. You're also wrong. Both those things are fairly routine and mundane to someone like me. No, no, oh, you're so smart. It's more like, hey, I just, that's, I just know how that world works in that regard. So that's going to become a reality, I would say, five, ten years out. And now donors will be able to more easily choose. And in that context, charities who are only a charity and only issuing tax receipts are going to have more competition. Corporation as a bank account. 
And corporations are going to rapidly figure out, and a lot of them already have, that there's no value in them for that other than saving the world. So, I don't know, again, like my advice based on the limited you know, knowledge I have of like who you guys are and what you're doing is to try go into corporations and provide accountability and reporting through a type of interface that adds value to the corp. Maybe last question because we've got one minute left, I'm told. This is just an idea. Okay, I love ideas. I guess all my questions are real. Yeah. Someone earlier talked about trying to say, but you're more articulate than I am. Um, uh, but yeah, absolutely. Like, listen, I mean, um, okay, tons of corporations pay for volunteers. Uh, they pay their staff to volunteer. I do that even, right? Uh, you um, volunteer, you know, fill out this Google form, we chimp you $15 an hour up to 60 bucks a month. That's what we do in my office. Okay, so now, ConocoPhillips, for example, uh, a big oil company, so maybe I should say that it's true. But it, just as an example of like a big corporation, they pay charitable dollars, basically in effect, to co to their um, staff who volunteer. So, for example, if you're a soup kitchen, like you could actually get people in to help the volunteering that you actually need, while running a program for these people that actually helps with their matters related to the heart and mind, which does something for your cause and benefits them personally while getting a donation, because you say to the corporation, we need a hundred bucks, we need a thousand bucks a head as a donation to do this. Okay, as a, so that's 10 grand, as opposed to writing a $10,000 grant request to the corporation who, dude, we get grant requests all the time, guess what happens to them? They go directly into the recycle bin. Direct, no, for real. They go directly into the recycle bin. That's because we're of the view that we're in charge of our own charity and we've chosen to do it through our, 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 our employees. So not that everyone can know that, not that we're necessarily good at helping people understand that, but so there's no reason to be sending me a grant request. Cool. Well, thank you so much. <laughs>